hello, it's Colette from Sacred Rose Temple and I am jumping on here in between sessions and I've just had lots to say really in this climate of massive change and the catalyst of, you know, what's coming in our collective and this coming year, which seems really significant for us all, 2025, we're going to see some really radical change in our lives. So I just wanted to share something about the feminine and this has kind of been in my um, field for some time, just working obviously over the years with women and empowering women and trying to bring women into this kind of inspirational role and self that they need to find in order for us to go through a catalyst of quite, you know, huge change really all depends on where women are and how we're catalyzing our wounds and our traumas and being aware of the ancestral uh, wounds and pains that have held us and our people back. But what I wanted to really say today was with regards to the feminine rising. Now, that's been a statement that's been used in the collective for quite some time. We see it in the spiritual communities. But what does that actually mean right now? Well, the feminine rises out of the darkness. The feminine isn't kind of floating midair. She's down there. And that means that we're all just trans forming ourselves on the level of basic woundings and pains and behaviors that we have carried. Disease in our body is always a sign that we have not moved through something, that we have not healed something, that something still lies within the psyche that is trying to desperately get our attention. And there has been much work by women starting to really go, okay, I need to heal this childhood trauma. I need to understand that the patriarchy only exists outside of me because it lives inside of me and I was only speaking to somebody about this last night who was allowing certain behaviors in a pattern of relationship and you know I know this woman's really strong and I know she opposes patriarchal kind of views but she's allowing patriarchy within her own relationship and her own psyche and that is for all of us, you know, we have created this world outside of us because of what needs to heal on the inside. So women are everywhere beginning to say, okay, like, I can't live like this anymore. This isn't soul filling. It's not what I came here to do. And unless we get to that point, we're still going to be in the mundane systems. We're still going to be in the patriarchal systems that were created to make us small and that we see all over the place we've got this obsession with the way we we look with all the surgery with the fillers with the with the botox with the just not allowing women to get old it's seen as uh, something that's detrimental rather than something that should be worshipped something that should really be you know a passage into wisdom and into our prowess and so we've got to stop blaming patriarchy, yet yeah, they can tease us with all manner of things, but we've got to find that solid pillar in ourselves that says, I am worthy, I am enough, I am beautiful, I do not need to inject things into my face, put silicon in my body to be more of a woman, to be prettier, to be nicer. And if that's what we do, we need to look at why. Why do we have to have implants to make us feel more feminine? Why don't you feel feminine? Why don't you feel sexy? Working on that is in the realms of sacred sexuality. Sacred sexuality makes us feel gorgeous on the inside. It's like we are the rose that's blooming. God gave us this body. God gave us this face. And we will wear it with pride. We are worthy. We are beautiful as women. And we must be a force against this attack on the feminine that's coming in. We must do healing in this area so our young girls don't grow up thinking that they need these things to be more beautiful. That is because the external has become more important than the internal. So we might have all this profound beauty, but what about beauty on the inside? How beautiful is your life? How alive is your soul? They're the important things for our daughters. And they're the important things that we as women should be healing ancestrally for the women that came before us and the women that will come after us. So feeling in the realms of being worthy, being naturally worthy of yourself for all that you are, 
and then trying to move forward with that worthiness once you feel it, once you know you're naturally beautiful, that you're naturally embodying all the essences of what it is to be feminine, small boobs, big boobs, big noses, small noses, thin lips, big lips. It doesn't matter. What matters is how does the inner soul shine through that body? And that brings us the glow. That brings us the beauty. We become internally radiant and that seeks outside for more radiance. I have gone through a big transformation recently and had to cast and shed quite heart-wrenchingly away from love in my life and to always hold that knowing that these things come because they're meant to change us, that they're meant to change our situation, that they're meant to bring us better. And I've been doing such deep work on myself that I can't ignore the fact that through this heartache, through this suffering, through what has happened to me, that something wants to grow in its place, something new wants to come in. So we're dissolving the old. So if you're in relationship and it's gone or you're in relationship and it's changing, this is super important because it's up staging, it's up gaming. It's asking you to let go of what was and start to come into what it is to become. And we've got to look at that. What is it we want? How do we want to live our life? What does that look like? And how do we start to build that? So we're not at the point of building it yet, but really as women being the oracle and seeing it, what does it look like? What do we want? What are the things that make our soul come alive? And I think what's happening is that they're becoming more simplistic. We're reasoning, we, we're realizing that the simple is actually where all the beauty is, the simplicity of nature, the simplicity of a life that's full of love and harmony and home and the magic that you feel in the safety of love within yourself that you can create. So let's up game. Let's really begin to say, okay, like I've got this, whatever it is, I've got it. And I can really, you know, be asked to up level, really be asking myself to say, you can do this. You've got it. This is going to take you further. And it might be uncomfortable. It might be heartbreaking. It might be bloody difficult. But that in itself is a sign. It's where you are growing. So it's time to get rid of comfort. It's time to get rid of external validation from friends, from partners, from your analyst, from your therapist, from your teacher, from your guide, wherever that's coming from. Start looking for external validation. Turn into yourself. Let the truth of your voice come out. Stand in what you have been learning, the wisdom that you have been gaining, the womb power that you've been working with. Stand in that spiritual prowess and really feel, you know what? I'm pretty awesome. Look at these things I've done. And I share this morning in the energetic forecast for this week that we're looking at really changing the foundation of relationship externally, but also internally with our own self. What is your relationship with you like? Where are you diluting yourself? Where do you not stand up and speak out? Where do you not own your hard-earned wisdom or your hard-earned studying? I'm someone that's been in spiritual work since I was 19 years of age. I have gone through hundreds of thousands of hours of training in many modalities, and it's about time I owned it. So what do you need to own? Where is your wisdom? Where is your speciality? What are you bloody brilliant at? And then bring that to this earth platform because it's so needed. And the longer we are hiding from the things we are really great at, really practiced in, really embodied in, are the very things that 
are needed on this earth. The other area is to watch for where you're not qualified, where you aren't embodied. And if it's something that you are grasping for, then go for it. But do the time-tested work, the do it time-tested, devote to practice, devote to whatever it is that you want to do. And I say this often, you know, we are all probably brilliant at everything, but it's what we've devoted time to. If we're going to be a pianist, we're going to spend hours on the piano. That's what's going to make us good at playing the piano. If we're going to be a great runner, we're going to get out and run every day. So what is it you want to do? What are you good at? And what can you devote your time to? So time of devotion. Devotion is very feminine, is really a feminine concept that we hold really well. I devote to me. I devote to my practice. I devote to my spirituality, my womb wisdom, my druidess. I am making very clear all the things in my life at the moment that I am devoted to. So this is a profound time, and I will keep saying that, for us as women to really not only rise, but to really step on the platform of life. See life as a huge myth that we're living, that the gods are rooting for us. And that the archetypes that live within our psyche are looking for the role to work with the heroine. She wants to overcome the darkness. The heroine wants to overtake the challenge. She wants to meet her destiny. She wants to meet what her soul searches for. So think about the myth of life and what your myth of life is and what your heroine needs to do to become that beautiful story that will be your life. So I hope that brings you some power and some wisdom. This has come straight through from my womb this morning as an urgent message for all the powerful women out there. So take care, own your power, own your feminine principle, and let's make some drastic changes on this planet. Bye for now.